Hello people of YouTube, it's Deep Hack here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.3 and Heat Blur Simulations F14B Tomcat Module. Welcome to Tutorial 11 ACL, which is uh, Automatic Carrier Landing System. This is a, a system in the F-14 Tomcat which allows you to land the aircraft hands-off on the carrier, which is quite handy, of course, in poor weather conditions or at night. Now, uh, this system's uh, somewhat complex in order to set up correctly, and so that's actually mostly what this video is going to be about, uh, how to uh, meet all of the requirements for activating the system. So, uh, I'm about uh, 12 miles away from the Abraham Lincoln right now, uh, at... Uh, what altitude am I at, actually? Uh, we're currently at just over 3,000 feet. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty good setup to be in, in order to do a landing with the ACL system. Now, I'm not going to cover the full uh, Case 1 approach. I'm actually going to tell him to be quiet because uh, otherwise he will uh, natter on during the course of this. So, uh, no... Mm, actually, yeah, disable... Ah, screw it, we'll, we'll keep him for now. Um, so yes, uh, this is actually a pretty good setup. Uh, I'm not going to cover case one, we're just going to do a very, very simplistic straighten approach. Uh, the focus of this video is not correct procedure, but how to use the ACL system. Now, uh, initially I will get Jester to do all the back seat setup for us, but I will cover that uh, after we touch down. So, uh, let's speak to Jester, and in the very first instance what we want to do is set up the data link. So let's go to data link, set the host, and in this case, we're going to land at the George Washington, so we want to select that one. Roger. And he'll do all his programming in the back. Uh, what we want to do in the front is we want to take a little look at the pilot's displays. We want to ensure that we are in landing master mode, that our steering command is coming from AWL slash PCD, and we want to make sure that our reference for both the HUD and the VDI is ACL and not ILS. Uh, so these switches should be in the down position. Uh, and that then means that all of the information we want to get from there is appearing on the HUD on and the VDI. Uh, and then lastly, we want the TACAN for reference because that's always really valuable in these approaches. So TACAN command is to pilot. And so I can actually just switch the pilot uh, controls here. And for... Abraham Lincoln, it's actually uh, two X-ray and transmit and receive. With those settings in, I now have the position of the carrier indicated with this needle and a distance indicated here. One, three, lets me know that, lets me know that we are at uh, 13 nautical miles. So with that all done, we now want to get the aircraft into position for landing. I'm actually going to flip this back to daytime HUD so that we can read this a bit better. Uh, we're uh, actually we're a little bit below the glide slope and we're not properly aligned just yet. So let's go ahead and continue with that and then we will continue the setup for uh, getting the autopilot working. So let's get the speed down. I've got throttle to idle, air brake out, and uh, let's get ourselves into position. I'm also going to start a gentle left turn because uh, the glide slope will come in quickly enough. Okay, speed's coming down. I'm going to go gear down. I'm going to go flaps down. Oh, and actually, I need to be more to the right. It's going too far left there. We want to just center these needles. Now, note that in the F-14, uh, the needles need to be centered on uh, your aircraft symbol, not on the flight path marker. Uh, like a lot of modern aircraft would work. Okay, we're getting ourselves into configuration now. Let's get the throttle back up a little. And at this stage, it's very important to get the auto throttle engaged. So auto throttle is on. At this stage, we are completely hands off on the throttle. Uh, you can see the needle is starting to come in. While that's happening, I'm going to look down at the autopilot and enable... Let's actually just do a, a pause here. Let's enable ACLS channel and set autopilot to enable. And I'm going to pause the simulation here because we're going to go over the check lights that we have down the left hand side of the VDI. So the very first one that comes up is landing check. That's just uh, telling us basically to make sure that our aircraft is configured for landing. I have gear down and flaps down so I am configured. Uh, so that's all pretty good. The next one that we'll get is ACL ready. 
uh, that means that we are receiving the necessary signals and um, the system is, is functioning normally. Uh, the, the next one we'll get after that is A slash P CPLR, and that means that we are ready for ACL autopilot control. At that stage, we can tap the nose wheel steering button and the autopilot will immediately engage. And that will give us the CMD control light, uh, which will let us know that the aircraft is now being completely controlled over ACL by the carrier. Last one we'll get after that is 10 seconds. That gives us a 10 second warning that we're about to touch down. If at any stage we get the voice light after we've had command control, that's effectively an abort. It's telling us to revert to voice-based approach. Uh, and the other one we might get is tilt. If we see a tilt light, that means that the system has lost signal for more than two seconds and we should get ready for a disconnect. Uh, and this A slash P ref just lets us know that the autopilot is correctly preset in order to, to work with the system. One other thing to note is that you have to have pushed the DLC enable uh, push button before the system will actually engage. So let's uh, come completely out of active pause here. I'm going to have manual control a bit longer. I'm going to press the DLC button. So that's now set. And let's get ourselves a little bit closer in. That's us just past 10 miles. Um, we're not likely to see any other lights or indications until we hit about 6 miles. So for now we're going to fly manually and we're just going to follow the needles. And uh, we don't need to touch the throttle. We have to be very careful about touching the throttle because that could result in an auto throttle disconnection. Also note that the E bracket is also referenced uh, to the aircraft symbol and not to the flight path marker. Nine miles. Still on landing check just now. Okay, it wants us to come around to the left a little bit. So we're always referencing the carrier's position with this needle on the TACAN, and then basically just trying to fly the needles that are displayed both in the HUD and in the VDI. The VDI probably gives you a slightly better uh, resolution uh, on, on the needles, but uh, yeah, you can fly sort of either. Yeah, we're coming into alignment now. Waiting for the glide slope to start coming down. Still in landing check. That's us at just coming up on seven miles. There we go. We now have ACL ready and A slash P couple. At this stage, I'm going to actually wait for the glide slope to come in because it, it's best not to engage the autopilot with the needles too far away from center because the autopilot can be quite um, violent. <laughs> and uh, you know we're, we're flying at quite a high angle of attack configuration here. We really don't want to do any violent maneuvers. That's it, just about in the center. I'm going to tap nose wheel steering now. And you'll note that we now have command control. And at this stage, I've let go of the stick. So I now no longer have hands on the throttle or the stick. The aircraft is completely flying itself. Uh, both uh, in guidance and also in uh, throttle. We're going to allow it to continue inbound for a bit longer. Next thing we're watching out for is the 10 seconds warning. I actually just realized as well I did a very bad thing. Hook was not lowered. That should have been done right at the beginning. Done it now. <laughs> so we have hook down, we have confirmed, gear down, speed breakout, flaps down, and DLC enable. We also have autopilot engaged and auto throttle engaged. So we're going to continue inbound, reporting 4.5 miles. Uh, and so, of course, today it's kind of early in the morning. Weather is good. There's not that much wind. There's really not that much to worry about here. Uh, but of course, at nighttime or in poor weather conditions, this system could be uh, a real lifesaver. Uh, and I've got to say, I myself am not that good at landing the F-14 at the best of times, so uh, I find this, this system quite invaluable. So if we, we could, you know, we would have the option of using this system actually and flying this whole approach completely manually. In that case, we would just align the needles uh, and also we'd be looking to maintain the E-bracket in the right position using the throttle as well. But uh, with the ACL system, it's doing all of this for us. Uh, one thing to note is that the ACL, sorry, the auto throttle when in ACL will not advance the throttle to afterburner in the event of a bolter. 
So the moment we touch down, we're going to manually advance the throttle full forward. There we go. We have the we have the ball. It's right in the middle. At this stage, if we were flying manually, we would transition to flying the ball, uh, but the the ACL will do this for us. Once we get the 10 seconds light, uh, one thing to note is that at that point the system transitions to a mode where it actually accounts for the movement of the carrier as well. So as of right now, we're really just ensuring alignment. 10 seconds and then it goes into a kind of precision mode where it's actually accounting for the movement of the carrier as well. One point five miles. Getting pretty close now. We should see the ten seconds light any moment now. Still fully aligned. We actually engaged quite far out. You normally don't need to engage until about four miles. That's our five hundred feet warning. Dirt at three o'clock. Ten seconds. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to push the throttle forward. I've got my hand hovering over both the throttle and the stick, just in case. On the deck, full throttle, but that was a capture. I can go back to idle. And we made it. We're on the carrier without having used the stick or throttle. Two wire, okay, not terrible. And at this stage we could raise the hook, raise the flaps, and uh, we'd be ready to taxi off. Uh, I guess we could also go wings to manual. Oops, what did I do there? There we go. And bring them all the way back as well. So, aircraft is all folded up, on the deck, ready to clear. So, uh, last thing I'll cover is how you actually do that setup from the back seat. So let's jump into the back seat, and if I take a little look at the, um, the data link panel here, the important thing is setting the frequency. I currently have 323.2, data link is on, and it's in TAC mode. Now I can get this frequency from my kneeboard. If I flip a couple of pages, uh, we were landing at the George Washington, and you can see here that's frequency 323.2. Two. Um, so yeah, you've got to make sure this is intact. Data link, of course, needs to be on and the correct frequency entered. The other system that the aircraft uses in ACL is the uh, radar beacon. So you need to make sure your radar beacon is set to ACLS. It has some other modes that it can be in, and of course it needs to be powered on. In the event that uh, these requirements are met, the green light will illuminate. That means the data link is correctly programmed, and the radar beacon is powered and operating normally. So the green light is your confirmation there. That's everything that you need to do from the back seat. Uh, and then just once more to confirm everything that was done in the front seat, uh, we needed to have the aircraft in landing mode. Uh, we needed to be referencing ACL, both in the HUD and the VDI. Steering command needed to be AWL slash PCD. I, you don't need to, but I set the TACAN because that's a very useful reference. And then I made sure that the autopilot was in ACL mode and it was engaged. I also made sure that my auto throttle was on. It won't engage now, of course. And I also made sure that DLC Engage had been pushed. I actually have that in my HOTAS. Uh, I don't know what that would be normally, uh, but I have it set here. DLC Toggle, I have it set to something on my throttle. Uh, I don't know why, but until you hit the DLC Toggle, you can't actually engage the system. Uh, I assume that's a, a real-world limitation there. And uh, as I said, you're going to get landing check slight at 10 nautical miles. ACL Ready. Uh, is going to happen at 6 miles, uh, or actually, sorry, I'm getting this mixed up. 6 miles for landing check, 4 miles for ACL ready, uh, and then you can engage the system as soon as you see A slash P CPLR. And this A slash P reference is just a, an indication that your autopilot is ready to engage. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. 
It's a, a really big uh, help, those of you who have done so. Uh, also, a big shout out to Deep Hack's Ground Crew. Uh, if you want to further support the channel, that's a really good way of doing so for a small monthly fee. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan, Leo Netzel, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandro Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, uh, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinkir Tan, Veli Tapani Corpicanas, Tiger Muto, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.